We want to thank you for making the trip down. Um, we appreciate our special guest here today. Just want to start off by saying, Commissioner Ball, so appreciate your interest in our young people and growing the industry. So thankful that you had the opportunity to come and hear from um, our students. Uh, they're a pretty impressive group. Um, appreciate all you've done for the industry. Assemblyman McGee is the ranker in the assembly. Uh, on the He's agriculture the committee, oh, the, the, chair. the chairman and Assemblyman Blankenbush is the ranker, and I appreciate the partnership that we've had with uh, both uh, Assemblyman McGee and Assemblyman Blankenbush on a number of issues that are so important to uh, the industry of the state. Uh, been great partners, and thank them very much. And Senator Valeski is on the Senate Ag Committee, and he has been an ally who has continued to fight with me for um, issues that I know, are important. I don't fight with <laughs> so, fight with We fight together. Yeah, it's probably a good thing you clarified. Right, right, yeah. No, well, fight with me for the yes, interest right, of Yes, exactly. Culture, That's so. right. And uh, for our students uh, who are here with uh, Jane Aikens from Northwest Tech, they are an impressive group. Uh, they have such enthusiasm for the industry and have done so much to, I think, garner interest from uh, <coughs> students across the area. So we appreciate you being here, appreciate you talking about um, your interest, and then maybe at the end to talk about the potential for the Ag Academy. Yes, thank you. So for with that, us. we'll turn it over to the students to start. Okay. Um, Hi, my name is Natalie Chambers. Um, first of all, I would like to thank all of you guys for giving us your time out of your day and welcoming us in here to talk about our passion. Um, I attend Hubleton Central School and Northwest Technical Institute as a senior. In the fall, I will be attending Morrisville State College and focusing my studies in agricultural science, hopefully to be an ag teacher. <laughs> Growing up on a dairy farm in northern New York has definitely shaped me into who I am today. Um, being part of this industry has shaped me into who I am because it has not only taught me time management, hard work, life and death, but it has shaped me into who I am today because now I love myself. I'm running dry. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. I've got so much to talk about. Yeah. Take your time. Um, yeah, relax. Deep breath. Listening to my best friend talk about the way she loves the industry and her interest in it has left me with one question, and it's how can I get her involved? There's no classes or schools that can offer us anything to give her the help she needs to get into the industry, and that is where we are lacking our edu educational programs in agriculture. Attending college is going to be a difficult thing for me because not only am I one student going into the industry, but where's the rest of them? There's nobody by my side for the day that my father looks at me and says, I need you to take over the farm, and the only one standing next to me will be my sister to help me out. What about the farmer down the road who's going to look at me and say, I have no family, I have no kids to take over my industry, and I can't financially handle this anymore. What are we going to do about that? Why is this needed educational industry being ripped and hidden away from my youth? <coughs> What about these kids who have the desire and the determination to be in the industry but can't be qualified because there is no class that they can take and receive the education they need to be qualified to run a farm? I think that in order to get these students more pushed and to help me out in the future and make things work out, the only way to do it is to open up an opportunity for them to come into a classroom. And that might not even have to be a classroom, maybe out on a farm in a field, in a pasture with cows, anything to get them to learn where it starts and where the food is, comes from. We need to, f these, this generation is left with nothing. We have to be able to feed the world eventually and it's sad that this is being torn away from us and these students, we can't all survive off of one farm. None of us can. What's gonna happen to the local farms around us? There's gonna be nobody to take them over. Nobody, because nobody qualifies anymore and nobody has the interest to be in there. We need that. And this is me saying that I believe in the future of agriculture and so should you. Okay, I guess I'll take over the table now. <laughs> so uh, my name is Alyssa Gagno and I am currently a senior at Madrid Winington Central School. 
I also attend Northwest Tech for natural resource conservation or natural resource management. I plan on attending Paul Smith's in the fall to progress in natural resource conservation and management in hopes of pursuing a career as a conservation officer. Um, my whole life I've been an outdoors kid, but I didn't have the opportunities, like Natalie, to grow up on a farm. The closest thing I had to an occupation involved in the outdoors is my family's kayak and canoe rental business. So programs like these are very important to kids like us because it's where we are educated and informed on the agricultural industry. It's only a two-year program, but I have to say I've learned more in this program than I could have imagined, ever imagined I could. I can identify 40 trees, take apart, put together back a chainsaw, know my cow breeds, raise chickens. I can know my different soils and everything. It's great. Um, I feel like this program is important because it gives you more opportunities, not just in the classroom, but outside the classroom. If it's going to farms, visiting, tapping maple syrup, like that. And it's also given me the opportunity to be an active member in the FFA. And through FFA, I've been on a variety of trips and I've made friendships and memories that will last a lifetime. When Natalie and I took our first trip together to Louisville, Kentucky for the National FFA Convention, I was honestly unaware of how much our friendship would grow. And I am proud to call her my best friend. And like, here we are now, traveling all around New York State, speaking out for what we believe in and what we love. And we feel that more kids like us should have the opportunity to go for this. Uh, FFA has helped to improve on my social skills and my public speaking. I used to be a shy kid, and here I am now speaking in front of cameras and <laughs> all of you guys, and I don't shut up now, so. <laughs> it, FFA also helps to boost the confidence in the youth, including myself. I've seen a lot of improvement in it. Uh, it's taught me how to stand up for what I believe in and to respect the environment, not only for me, but for generations to come. The program has taught me time management and how to step up and be a leader when necessary. As technology advances our youth social skills, they seem to falter. I think we all can agree with that. I'm seeing it in my peers. I see it with kids I watch. It's everything's technology. We need more programs like these to teach the youth the importance of these skills and educate them on where our food comes from and how great it is to be a part of the community. Uh, I feel like we need to preserve these skills not only for me but for my future kids and for their kids and that's about it I think. Stick to it. Yep, I'm just gonna. Okay. Great. My name's. Thank you. My name's Harley Rubin. I'm currently a senior at Lisbon Central uh, High School and I attend Northwest Tech for Natural Resource Management and I plan on going to Morrisville State in the fall for equine science and management and expand my love for horses and one day hopefully having my own farm. And when I first started the BOCES program two years ago, I never imagined myself being in agriculture wanting to go and have my own farm someday. But I found Alyssa and Natalie and I, my BOCES teacher, she pushed a lot of us to like for the love of agriculture. There's not any programs around that could have gotten me involved other than my BOCES program. And the uh, biggest part it taught me is hard work, dedication, communication, and especially how to be myself. I never had anything throughout high school or even when I was younger to express myself. And agriculture is one of those things that you just have to be you. Carly, can you talk a little bit about what you did for the youth to um, show them? Mm -hmm. um, this fall we just had, it's called Agriculture Day for the younger kids. It was K through sixth grade and we had about 150 to 200 um, younger students and they came over. We had um, farm animals such as donkeys, calves, um, chickens, pigs, um, goats. Um, and we also had tons of games like soil science games to um, help them teach about the soils and stuff. Um, we also had um, facts about like the animals, um, 
cow to take care of them, what they were like, um, what kind of stuff they can give us, like cows with the milk and the different dairy products. And um, we had up just tons and tons of games to help educate them, to get them interested. And we still have younger kids uh, today that come out and reach to us to tell us how much they really loved it. <clears throat> Is it, is it through BOCES that your programs yes. are all happening? So we just had a bunch of elementary kids come over. We let them sit on the tractor in the bobcat, let them interact with the animals, brought them in, showed them the chainsaws, and we had like, little activities for them and stuff. And my little cousin still brings it up. Every time I go over to her house, she just keeps asking for it and asking for it. So sure, sure. it's a cool yeah. thing them. It's a great BOCES program, but the fact that it's not labeled as maybe agriculture education it's natural resource management it, if you can't take a class that focuses on agriculture it's hard to get into an agriculture related class and be in the higher rankings mm -hmm. and coming from me I didn't take natural resource management my junior year I actually wanted to be a photographer believe it or not <laughs> um, but once I met Patty uh, Gilbert my last day of my junior year she informed me about the FFA meeting coming up and now look at this. <laughs> I even got a blue jacket. Now I'm wearing, I wear the blue jacket now. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. It's great. That's the best choice I've it's, ever made. It was also yeah. great to get kids like Natalie into the program that really do express the interest in there. She's willing to help the class out like when it comes to identifying cows. I can teach her all the trees but I don't know anything about cows but right, she's right. taught me more than I ever thought I could. And she taught me how to run a chainsaw. So it's, <laughs> it's, a very, it's a very welcoming class. We're all so close and it's definitely something I'm going to miss when I graduate. I look forward to going to BOCES every day and seeing my friends and just going out into the world and actually getting the hands-on experience that you can't get at home school. But it is a shame it's split up the first year's forestry, the second year's agriculture. And so there's so much stuff to fit in in these two years. I just wish it was more so based so on more? yeah, <coughs> on either one subject, so you can either just choose to take forestry two years or ag two years. And that's what's great about the agricultural program we're trying to start yes. up is it's all ag based, your mass ag based, your science, your history. And I feel like that would be a great opportunity for a student going into this field. Yeah. And if Ms. Akins, do you want yeah, to talk about talk that a little I, bit? I, I, I do you have just 10 questions for the girls? No, uh, very pleased to hear that two of you are going to Morrisville. <laughs> <laughs> Morrisville is about four miles from my home. Oh, wow. Awesome. And I'm on the College Foundation Board. My now. sister attends Morrisville. Yeah, yeah, great great school. Great and, school. He, and he has Sunday dinner every week. There you yeah, go. that's right. <laughs> That's always nice to know. I'll have to drive up there. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, great. So, so I, I've had the privilege of um, being the principal at Northwest Tech Center for seven years, and this year I took the position of director of career and technical education for the for St. Lawrence County. So, um, these three were were my students, and um, they still are, but I'm not located in their building anymore. Okay. But being out of the tech center and um, looking a little more globally, we're, um, we're looking at creating programs to meet the needs of our county, um, meet the employment needs, and um, really looking at coming up with programs that will do that. And with that said, um, we have really worked hard at developing uh, Agricultural Studies Academy, which will be a senior year only program, and we're doing it out at the Cornell Cooperative Extension Farm. We're going to be located off site because our tech centers are absolutely packed. We have no more room. Um, we in North in in St. Lawrence County have. Um, the percentage of students that come from 11th and 12th grade from our 18 component school districts is 47%. Um, so we get almost half of all the juniors and seniors in the county that come to our tech centers, which is, is different. I don't know if you, you've looked at averages, but it, it's high. It's yes, on the high side. And it's because there's not a lot of electives, and, I, and we do a good job with what we do. Our programs are, ve are very good. So. With that said, the Agriculture Studies Academy, we're looking at opening um, in September of 2016. Um, we have 
spoken with all of the component school districts. We have a good um, amount of students that are very interested in coming. Canton is really centrally located in the county, so um, we're going to be able to transport students there. Um, they're going to get it's going to be a full day program. They're going to get all their credits. Um, social studies, the economics and government and English right out there, um, the PE and eat lunch out there. And it's going to be a great, a great environment and they're going to really focus on plant and animal science. So we've got a Cracker Jack teacher that we kind of stole from their program. Um, Patty Gilbert is um, a Cornell graduate. Yeah. and um, she's she's just wonderful so we're really looking forward to it so waiting on a little bit of funding hopefully we can make this happen but okay. um, I think it's looking great well it sounds sounds awesome yeah appreciate the passion here that's yeah, really yeah, great yeah. and I think I think we want to really make sure that we focus on that we're we're not looking for manure spreaders and milkers we need people that are really um, trained in the technical aspects of farming so we're looking to to do that to start that sure. because that's that's really important when you look at where agriculture is today it's very different mm -hmm. and um, there's a huge technical side to it that they really need to be exposed to so San mm -hmm. Lawrence County is such a big county it's a huge county uh, in the Canton location mm -hmm. you, you think you're going to get the uh, students from like Messina and well, we've already, you know, it's interesting, we've already got a student from Messina. Huh? So, um, because, you know, it, it, it's interesting that there's certain programs that are housed in different areas throughout the county, and Potsdam houses some programs, as does Canton, and so they're already sending buses. So that kind of makes it easier. It Because we're so rural, they're used to moving on buses. They yeah. just really are. And uh, the fact that it's a full day program makes it a little easier too, because it's it's not like these girls come half day, you know, they, they get dropped sure. off and picked up two, hour, two and a half hours later. Correct. So the full day thing makes it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Makes it necessary. Yeah, so. yeah. Like my bus ride to BOCES is about 35 minutes. Yeah. So I ride 35 minutes to BOCES. I'm there for two hours and 20 minutes, and then I have a 35 minute bus ride back to homeschool. Mm -hmm. So it's like I could, really be fitting a couple classes in there but sure. it's just how it is it's yeah. how it's set up yeah. can one of you tell me about these amplify buttons these amplify <laughs> this is from the national ffa convention which natalie and i were given the opportunity to go to we didn't really know until about four days before the convention that we were Going. allowed to go <laughs> so we were just we're like we're doing this so we jumped on the bus and um, actually VVS, they are the ones they kind of adopted us into their chapter for the week and l allowed us to kind of hitch a ride on their tour. And we went to Kentucky and... They didn't make you sign a membership form, right? No. <laughs> no. no. You gotta watch uh, it. That's right. And buttons are expensive. <laughs> These are like $50, are $50 buttons. buttons. Oh my so God. You can't lose your button. This is, this is how we actually got into the convention okay. center in Louisville. Yeah. Okay. Um, you have to walk in with a button, mm -hmm. so there's mm -hmm. not adult That's random adults badge. walking right. around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was about, I think it, the total, that one of the days was 68,000 member, members were in this convention hall. So. We met people from Puerto Rico to California, from Louisiana, New Nebraska. York. Yeah, it was. Sure. We met cool. everybody. We still talk. Yeah, oh, we yes. have, we have friends that we still talk to. We have sure. a friend that's having a birthday party this weekend, and he wants mm -hmm. us to come down. And <laughs> we're going. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're gonna try to make our way down there. Wow, it's awesome. So, yeah. it and this is only the awesome. second year of the FFA chapter. Yes. So it's a brand new chapter. <laughs> Um, where our hands are a little bit tied is that we only have students for two years mm -hmm. so and FFA starts a lot younger and they could have a lot more you know more of a um, global experience by starting younger so we're trying to get some of our schools involved at a younger level there's uh, several other FFA chapters one in Canton one in Governor yes that, so they're, they're trying to tag in with that and, and just get the interest at a younger level sure. you know I think they spoke to it but didn't clearly state it that there's just no agriculture related programs prior to coming to the tech center. Right, yeah. Yes, and like to be a just part small of schools, you know, the electives aren't there anymore tough. because right. the money's not there. So sure. to be a part of FFA, you have to be in an agricultural yes. class. You can't yeah. just 
one day, like, I'm just going to join FFA. Yeah. You actually have to. You have to be enrolled. And you can do a proof. independent study, but that's also hard to get into. And it's Someone's a lot of work. That yes. Yeah. So it's like the independent study is slim to none for enrollment rate. Now, FFA has just brought not only me, but these two, these great opportunities. But the fact that we don't have a program that we can just say, hey, you're from Hubleton, you're from Ogdensburg, you're from wherever you are in St. Lawrence County, you want to be an FFA? We can't do that because they're not in an ag enrolled program. Right? Right. But do you have to be necessarily interested in agriculture in order to be an FFA? No, you don't because it doesn't even mean future farmers of America anymore. It's more education on the industry, horticulture, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Now, how come we can't bring city students in maybe and say, hey, do you want to take an agriculture related class and get involved in FFA yes. and have these amazing opportunities? I've seen many people from the cities at National FFA they, Convention yes, yes. just because at their high school and out of state, they could take those classes sure. that we can't. That's the one thing that I've heard over and over again that there's so much interest in FFA, mm -hmm. but there's been an issue with funding. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. if we're looking to, um, in order to grow uh, the interest in young people, we have to make sure the resources in there. And that's why I appreciate all of you being here. Absolutely. The assemblyman has been a great champion when it comes to that in the assembly, uh, along with uh, Assemblyman Plank and Bush. And I know uh, the commissioner has talked about the young farmer issue many times. So whether you know it or not, this is a pretty amazing opportunity oh, for all absolutely. of you to have uh, yes, these gentlemen so here to, um, to hear directly from you today. Yeah, um, it means I, a lot. And the fact that at least uh, in our local community, something's being absolutely. done and it's continuing to grow. And I think uh, there's just tremendous um, opportunities with the Ag Academy yeah, get absolutely. it up and running. Yeah. And, and Senator Ritchie, we appreciate all your support and that yeah. you bring us to this table is amazing and it, it's a great opportunity for us. You've so. got great leadership here. Uh, they get it. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's hard to talk to people who get it, but these, <laughs> <There you go. laughs> these people all get it. Yeah. Yeah. I think awesome. a, couple of, a couple of things. I can relate very much to what you were saying because uh, I was one of those lucky kids that knew he wanted to be a farmer when he grew up, but my grandparents sold their farm when I was about 11. Uh, I didn't have the BOCES opportunity or the FFA opportunity, but uh, when I did get out of high school, I walked down a, a lane lane, knocked on the door, and asked for a job. And that's where I got my education on farming. So I appreciate very much the desire and, and the challenges of how, how you learn. Uh, so having said that, we know we do an excellent job at Cornell when we get kids to Cornell. We know we do an excellent job at Morrisville or Cobleskill when we get kids there, but I think you've identified accurately the challenge is to get more kids in the pipeline who grow up through elementary school and junior high and, and realize in high school that agriculture is a viable way to make a living. There's a lot of opportunities out there. We've never had more opportunities in agriculture, I think, than we have today. And it's not just a strong back. Uh, you need to have technical skills. You need to understand about soils and animal health and plant health. And it's pretty intense. And uh, I think planting that seed, and I think ideas from you guys about how we plant that seed in grade school uh, and how we put, uh, get the kids groomed for BOCES, because I think BOCES is probably uh, one of the keys. I will tell you that a little bit of good news, we're having excellent conversations with the uh, Department of Labor now uh, about apprenticeship programs and internship programs, and we're including BOCES uh, in that, not just uh, the land grant schools. Say, how do we get the kids in the pipeline in the first place? How do we get the parents to be thinking that, you know, I just don't need to send my, my son or daughter off to uh, a four-year liberal arts degree to make a living? But, the ability to work with your hands as well as your head yes. is such a rewarding uh, thing to be able to do, whatever your trade. So, I think you've uh, correctly assessed the challenges that we have. Yes. Look forward to working with Senator Ritchie and Senator Valesky and Assemblyman McGee and Blank Bush to, to get that done. Awesome. Thank you. You know, I had a meeting earlier today and some. Farming is 
can be a very difficult um, business, but it's also very rewarding. And for the first time, someone came to meet with me uh, and said that they are trying to help a farm uh, find a CEO that pays a hundred thousand dollar <coughs> salary, a hundred and fifty thousand with the benefits. <coughs> and so many times when people think of farming, they think of farming past, not what's going That's on so now. And just that is an amazing opportunity for somebody who maybe sold their family farm in years past and is looking to get back in the industry. But there's so many opportunities out there. Sometimes they kind of get lost in what people sure. think uh, farming yeah. is Absolutely. from the past. Yeah. That was one big thing why we created the Ag Day was to get the younger kids into there, is to kind of have a small feeling of what, like, the farming and agriculture and even part of the forestry like what it really is like we want the kids to really come in and, and see that and they love it and still they talk to us today about it mm -hmm. and there's so many kids that want to go to BOCES mm -hmm. to do something related with that yeah. yes. it's not going to stop to be honest the opportunities are completely endless <laughs> I mean, growing up on a farm has been great because not only has it been easier for me to be involved in these opportunities, I am president of our Junior Holstein Club in St. Lawrence County. I am a junior dairy leader through Cornell, Cornell Pro Dairy. Like, if I could get them in an agriculture-related program and they could hop on board with maybe junior dairy leaders through Cornell, they could be traveling to Wisconsin, Ohio, all over the U.S. and learning and meeting people that would just put them in such higher ranking and qualifying in order to run their own dairy sure. if they want to. come back to. with great ideas. Yeah. yeah, they need to be exposed to it, yes. for sure. Yeah. Who had the median age of the New York State farm? Oh. I thought that was you? Yes. yes. Uh, the average age of farm operators... Careful, careful now, I'm a farmer. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean a fact. <laughs> <laughs> the average age is actually 57. Uh, yeah. 57. <laughs> That's, that's scary to me, to be honest, because I'm looking at my dad aging and my grandfather aging, my parents, like don't everyone on the what farm. That is. Yeah. <laughs> it's scary to me because I'm only 17 and before I know it, I'm going to be 19 and my dad's going to be looking at me saying, I can't do it anymore. And I'm going to have to maybe even drop out of college if I have to, and that's not what I want to do. <laughs> but. Yeah. If it has to be done, it has to be done. Sure. I yeah. feel like also to a point people need to understand is there's more to the farm than just milking cows or whatnot. There's so much behind it and so much work that goes in. And there's more than just a farmer. We need the mechanics and the soils and everything. So I feel like there's a career almost everybody could find in agriculture. They just, they don't understand the range of opportunities it actually has and that's something i think we need to educate more people on yeah. the more farms that slip under means the more jobs that disappear and we are looking for jobs we are scrambling for to find people who can't afford to even live in a house but there's endless jobs in this industry and the more we take away from it the more jobs we're taking away which makes no sense yeah this is this is good, and uh, I think we have already worked on this some, and I've worked with you on issues that have to do with agriculture, and we just need to continue doing that because uh, agriculture is the number one industry in New York, and, uh, so there's a lot of opportunity there, and we have tried the <coughs> legislature to uh, reduce taxes make it easier to be a farmer and what you know everything so uh, and I'm sure we'll continue one of the other big things has been marketing locally uh, New York products that's been a big issue so we'll keep working on it and hopefully this budget that we're going to have hopefully in a day or two uh, will uh, address some of these issues for agriculture just one quick point Senator I think Natalie you had said you're going to going to school to be an ag teacher yes that's really important because the commissioner talks about mm -hmm. young people and students in the pipeline but you know we need to do more to encourage young people to become ag teachers yes. Yes. I have a um, FFA chapter in a place called Tully mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. was in Southern Onondaga County, and they had a very difficult time. Derek Hill, so was their teacher for a long time, moved on to take a, a, a state job and had a difficult time filling that position. And so, it's difficult uh, to become one at that that's right. in New York so, State. That's right. I can't take ag education. I was going to attend, I applied to LSU, but Louisiana shut down every ag program, high school, the college level in the state yeah. with no funding. So that kind of, that options out. Now I'm going to have to find somewhere to get my education degree also. And yeah, like you can go like the, the cheap route kind of in New York State where you major in say agriculture and then you minor in education, mm -hmm. but that's only good in New York State. So if you want to leave state and be an ag teacher, you have to go back to school and get that degree, which is a shame. Yep. And I first see us having that problem when we're trying to sure. um, yeah. fill Patty Gilbert's position because yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. we're kind of stealing her for the ag studies mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so. Somebody I'd want to show you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's wonderful. She's amazing. In reality, I wouldn't even be wearing this jacket. That's true. She's either. She's awesome much throughout the year. Yeah. Well, as you can sure. see, these girls could talk all day. Yeah. Yes. 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 They're very passionate about this, but we do well, the, appreciate the, your time. The one problem we have, and I've said this over and over again, and these guys are probably sick of hearing it. But the Agriculture Committee and the Assembly is probably one of the most bipartisan groups we have, uh, that we work together pretty well, uh, Bill and I do. Uh, and, and some of the problems when you talk about funding issues is uh, when, when school districts look at programs, uh, you know, the FFA program is not a core program. No. And that's what the problem is with some of the school districts that have to make cuts. And I think we've got to change that kind of an attitude. Uh, so that the funding is there because I think the people that that uh, make some of those decisions don't really get it like yeah. well how we do and so what we have to do down here is spread that word so that the funding is there and uh, you know make this more more uh, I don't know if we're ever going to make it a core program but we've got to we've got to really watch that well, no, just keep the passion alive. It's uh, it's very exciting to talk about this because, uh, Natalie, I am above average. Uh, <laughs> I can believe it. Uh, well, thank you.